Ken, let me tell you about another great superpower of OpenZD. Oh, oh, this one is pretty neat. This one is server to client. So I come from the IoT space. In the IoT space, oftentimes you'll have probably one of three options. I don't know if there's a fourth option nowadays, but there were three when I was there. You will do polling, HTTP-based polling, very old school. You will do HTTP long polling, which means you open an HTTP request and you wait forever or for some very long amount of time for the server to respond. And then you instantly long poll one more time, or you'll okay. establish a WebSocket. And those are great ways of getting an IoT device to be able to talk to the server in some fashion. Let's also, uh, in a web si server, in a web world, there's a server side. WebRTC. No, 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 no. That, that, that's different. That's peer to peer. But um, no, I'm thinking about the uh, server side, not includes, but there's a web sockets. No, I already said web sockets. There's another way to do uh, um, server to browser communication. It's called like server, server side events. That's what it's called server side oh, yeah. events. So those are the ways I normally think of, uh, you know, the server being able to talk to a client. Um, you've brought up WebRTC, which is kind of interesting. WebRTC is a little bit in that space, but WebRTC is not um, a zero trust solution. Whereas with OpenZD, you have a mechanism of any participant on the network is able to just reach out and talk to another participant on the network with no special need whatsoever. If you have an application embedded uh, zero trust server and an application embedded zero trust client, you can let that server just directly communicate to the client. And the client has to be authorized to, to receive the request. So you can actually control whether or not the client is, is permitted to receive that request. <clears throat> um, and so that's a, a pretty cool superpower of OpenZD, being able to address anything anywhere, and that includes servers to clients. Right, so it's like overcoming one of these common challenges with, uh, with, with a centralized system with many distributed devices. And it's kind of like push notifications, which uh, sure, but when you want things to be timely, like I'm sure Android and iOS have had to deal with that in order to figure out some way to keep things connected and sufficiently responsive, so you get your notifications not too many minutes later. But uh, this gives you kind of a generic way of doing that for any piece of software that's not necessarily the operating system and it doesn't involve Google or Apple, but like your app can have those same capabilities in a ubiquitous way. Exactly. 